Hello friends, welcome to GT Science Tutorial. In this video, I am going to explain about adiabatic reversible expansion of an ideal gas. There are many numerical problems in thermodynamics and we require a lot of formulas to solve them. So in this video, we are going to derive some important formulas which can solve many numerical problems as well as we will see some numerical problems as well. So let's start. Let us consider some ideal gas is kept in a cylinder having weightless and frictionless piston. This is that weightless and frictionless piston. Here it is, the ideal gas is kept in it. The pressure of this ideal gas is P, the volume is V and internal energy is, yes you are correct, E. Now, we are considering the wall to be adiabatic. This wall is adiabatic wall. Adiabatic wall simply means the heat exchanged between the system and surrounding will be zero. That means it won't allow the heat to be exchanged between the system and the surrounding. Now, let me write that properly. Let us consider. Let us consider. A system having ideal gas having ideal gas and is enclosed in a cylinder having adiabatic wall having adiabatic wall then from first law of thermodynamics from first law of thermodynamics we know that the first law of thermodynamics is dq will be equal to de plus dw that means the sum of change in internal energy and the sum of work change in work done is simply equal to the amount of heat supplied to the system now in this particular case since dq is equal to zero so we can write de is equal to minus dw this is equation number one in place of dw we can simply write minus pdv so pdv so this whole is equation number one now we know that in this expansion work as we are talking about expansion so when the gas is expanded it does certain work done and when it does certain work done the value of dv or simply the value of dw is positive let me write that since the system the system does the work since the system does the work comma dw is positive and if dw is positive then this from this equation we can write minus sorry de that is change in internal energy is negative and if change in internal energy is negative that means internal energy is internal energy is decreasing and if internal energy is decreasing then temperature will also decrease right so till here we are very much clear we get this equation now let me erase unnecessary portion to continue the derivation now we can write dw is equal to minus de let us consider it to be equation number two or p dv is equal to minus de this whole is equation number two where this dv is the change in volume and p is the external pressure here p is the external pressure now let's introduce the concept of molar heat capacity that is molar heat capacity at constant volume because in that formula only there is change in internal energy okay so we know we know cv is equal to what is the value yes you know de by dt so, if we get the value of DE, we will write DV 
sorry cb into dt so this is the value of d let us consider it to be equation number 3 now let's equate equation number 2 and 3 putting the value of equation number 3 in 2 then what will we get yes if we put the value of de in equation number 2 then we can write p into dv is equal to minus cv into dt yeah this is equation number 3 sorry this is equation number 4 now as we are considering ideal gas so ideal gas equation will be used over here so from ideal gas equation from ideal gas equation we can directly write PV is equal to NRT for one mole when N is equal to 1 that is for one mole of gas the equation will change to PV is equal to RT right here let's replace this P from this formula that is P will be equal to RT by V so if we put the value of P from here to this equation then what will we get let's let, let's write that let me read this portion because we don't need it now so if we put the value of p that is rt by v in this equation equation 4 becomes equation 4 becomes see in this in this place p means rt by v into dv is equal to there will be minus cv into dt right let's take this rt to other side what will we get dv by v is equal to minus cv by r into dt by t right so we get this value now let's integrate this value in the respective limit integrating integrating within within respective limits respective limits so if we integrate them then what will we get dv by v is equal to minus cv by r into dt by t and the limit will be here v1 to v2 from t1 to t2 right and you know that the integration value of dx by x is yes you are correct this is ln x that is natural log x right so here we can write ln v from v1 to v2 is equal to minus cv by r and this can be written as ln t from t1 to t2 now we can directly i have directly write it over here okay see ln x from p to q can be written as ln q minus ln p that is upper limit minus lower limit right so we can directly write ln v2 minus ln v1 is equal to minus cv by r into l and t2 minus l and t1 right now let me erase this part so we got that much of value now that value can be written as l and v2 minus sorry v2 by v1 is equal to minus cv by r l and t2 by t1 because we know the formula this can be written as l and this value minus this value divided by this value q by p right now if we reciprocal it that is l and p by q if we take this value up and bring this value down then there, there will be a negative sign that's what we are going to do over here this will be l and v2 by v1 is equal to uh, this negative sign will be removed cb by r into l and t1 by t2 let us consider it to be equation number okay don't consider it to be any equation let us keep solving it ln v2 by v1 let's take this value to this side so this will be cv by r sorry r by cv r by cv will be equal to how much ln t1 by t2 okay now we know another formula that is the relation between the molar heat capacity at constant pressure and molar heat capacity at constant volume that is let me write this formula over here cp minus cb is equal to r right so in that place in place of r we can write cp minus cb by cv into ln v2 by v1 is equal to ln t1 by t2 so we get this much 
if we separate it and divide we will get cp by cv minus 1 into ln v2 by v1 is equal to ln t1 by t2 now we see there is cp by cv that is the ratio of molar heat capacity at constant pressure and molar heat capacity at constant volume i hope you have written this portion let me erase this portion because we are going to continue our derivation in this part so here there is cp by cv this is in special form cp by cv cp by cv is a constant is a constant and it is denoted by cp by cv is denoted by gamma and its value is 1.667 for monoatomic gas monoatomic gas like carbon you can say and gamma is equal to 1.44 for diatomic gas diatomic gas diatomic gas means oxygen chlorine hydrogen so for this gas the value of gamma will be 1.44 so here in this place what you can write uh, gamma minus 1 into sorry gamma minus 1 into ln v2 by v1 is equal to ln t1 by t2 right now this is the coefficient in case of log this coefficient will be the power of this value so it can be written as ln v2 by v1 to the power gamma minus 1 will be equal to ln t1 by t2. This ln and ln can be removed. We will get v2 by v1 to the power gamma minus 1 is equal to ln, sorry t1 by t2. If we do the cross multiplication then we will get a value that is t1 v1 gamma minus 1 t2 v2 gamma minus 1 and if in the both side there is same value then we can write t v gamma minus 1 to be a constant quantity constant quantity so this is the relation between temperature and volume relation between relation between temperature and volume so i hope you understood till this much now let's see the relation between temperature and pressure as well as pressure and volume for that let me erase this portion i hope you understood this portion you have already copied it we can simply get other relations just by replacing one of the variable from that expression so we know that from ideal gas equation pv is equal to rt we let's replace this t if we get you know, try to find out the value of t we will get pv by r is equal to t right so what will be the value in place of t we can write pv by r into there is v to the power gamma minus 1 is equal to it is a constant right now this r will go to that side r is itself a constant universal gas constant so it will become a constant again so it will be p into v to the power 1 plus gamma minus 1 simple the product law of indices and r will go to other side it will also become a constant so therefore p v gamma will be a constant this is another formula or you can simply write p1 v1 gamma is equal to p2 v2 gamma so p1 v1 gamma is a sorry p v to the power gamma is a constant this is relation between relation between yes you are correct pressure and volume now one more relation is remaining that is the relation between temperature and pressure to get that let's replace this v from this equation let me read this portion similarly from ideal gas equation we can get the value of v from here if we get the value of v then what will we get the value of v will be equal to rt by P, right so let's put that value in place of the uh, this v let's put this value okay so what will we get in place of v p into in place of this v let's put this value that is rt by p gamma is equal to a constant this is the value that we have right now let's solve it p into r gamma into t to the power gamma by p to the power gamma is equal to a constant right 
Now, this r to the power gamma is itself a constant quantity. If we take it to other side, this will again become a constant quantity. So, it can be written as p gamma into p to the power, the power of this p is 1. If we go to up, this will be 1 minus gamma is equal to a constant. So, this is a relation between temperature and pressure or we can simply write T1 gamma into P1 1 minus gamma is equal to T2 gamma into P2 1 minus gamma. So, this is another relation between temperature and pressure that is relation between, between temperature and pressure. So, these are some of the relation that are very important to solve many numerical problems in thermodynamics. Now, by using this relation, let's solve a numerical problem that, that will give us an idea what type of numerical problems that we are going to face in thermodynamics chapter and what type of numerical might come in examination. Let's see one important numerical. I have already done the question of the numerical problem that is a quantity of air at 25 degrees Celsius was allowed to expand reversibly and adiabatically from 100 atm to 50 atm. Calculate the final temperature of the air taking Cv is equal to 5 calorie per Kelvin per mole and R is equal to 2 calorie per degree per mole. So, let's solve this numerical problem. First of all, we need to write what is given. So, given values are T1. T1 is equal to 25 degrees Celsius. Always remember, we need to convert this into SI system and that SI unit of temperature is Kelvin, right? So, to convert it into Kelvin, we just have to add 273. So, it will be how much? 298 Kelvin. So, this is the value of T1 and P1 is given. P1 is given to be 100 atm. Similarly, T2 is not given. That we need to calculate. And P2 is given to be, yes, you are correct, 50 atm. And two more values are given. That is Cp, sorry, Cv is given to be 5 calorie per Kelvin per mole. And R is given to be 2 calorie per degree per mole. Right? So, these are the given values. Now, to get the value of T2, we need to use the formula T1 gamma into P1 1 minus gamma is equal to T2 gamma into P2 1 minus gamma. For that, we need to find out the value of gamma. And we know that gamma is simply the ratio of molar heat capacity at constant pressure to the molar heat capacity at constant volume. So, to get the value of gamma, we need to find out the value of P. So, there is another relation that we know that is Cp is e minus Cv is equal to R, right? So, let's put the values now. In place of this Cv, we need to put 5 is equal to 2. Then, therefore, Cp will be equal to 5 plus 2 will be equal to 7. So, here we got the value of Cp to be 7. Now, let's find out the value of gamma that is Cp by Cv. So, how much will it be? 7 by 5, right? Because the value of Cv is given to be 5. Now, if we divide, we'll get 1.4. That means we are talking about some diatomic molecule because for monoatomic molecule, the value of gamma was 1.667. Okay. Now, let's put the value now. We know, we know what is the formula of, what is the, what is the formula that relates temperature and pressure? T1 gamma into P1, 1 minus gamma is equal to T2 gamma into P2 1 minus gamma, right? This was the relation that we derived earlier. Now, to get the value of T2, let's put this T1 gamma to other side. Then we can write, like if we take this value to this side, the powers are same. So, we can write the common power and we will get this type of form. 1 minus gamma is equal to T2 by T1 to the power gamma, right? Now, let's take this gamma to this side. The power will divide it, right? So, P1 by P2 gamma sorry, 1 minus gamma by gamma will be equal to how much? T2 by T1. Now, if we do the cross multiplication, we just have to take this T1 to this side. So, it will be therefore, T2 is equal to T1 into P1 by P2, 1 minus gamma by gamma. Now, let's put the values. In place of T1, how much do we need to put? Uh, yes, you are correct, 298 because the value of temperature is 298 Kelvin into P1. P1 is 100 atm, P2 is 50 atm 
and the value of gamma is 1, 1 minus 1.4 by 1.4. So if you put this value, then we can directly get, let me write the value directly over here. The value will be 244.4 Kelvin. If you put this on calculator, you will directly get this much of value. So this is the value of final temperature of the system. So this type of numerical problems are frequently asked in the examination. You can prepare it properly. Now that's all in this video. I hope you understood everything about this video. If you like the video, please share this video as much as you can. And thank you for watching the video.